In the chronicles of true crime, certain tales stand as haunting anomalies, their narratives steeped in shadows and punctuated by unsettling twists. The tragic story of Christina Kettlewell, a young bride whose life met an untimely end in the serene backdrop of Severn Falls, Ontario, is a disturbing journey into the depths of mystery, deceit, and the human psyche. As a riveting record of love, loss, and the unraveling of seemingly ordinary lives, the events surrounding Christina's death transcend the boundaries of a conventional whodunit. This narrative unfolds against the backdrop of an inquest that transformed a quiet courtroom into a theater of suspense, where the spotlight exposed the complexities of relationships and the disturbing undercurrents that laid the groundwork for tragedy. Join us on Fireside Unsolved, Episode 61, as we delve into the layers of this true crime saga, where the boundaries between victim and perpetrator blur, and the quest for truth unveils a disturbing account of hidden motivations, dubious alliances, and a mysterious triangle of twisted emotions. In the heart of this unsolved mystery lies the unsettling question. Was Christina's death the result of a carefully orchestrated plan, or was she simply ensnared in a web of unforeseen consequences? Prepare yourself as we embark on a journey into the darkest shadows of Severn Falls, Ontario. On May 12, 1947, Christina Kettlewell took a daring leap of faith by eloping with John Ray Kettlewell, a 26-year-old war veteran, also known as Jack. Jack and Christina had decided to elope together after a three-year courtship, even against the backdrop of familial concerns that cast a shadow over the relationship, their love for each other grew. Christina's family, harboring anxieties about the hurried marriage, couldn't shake off an unsettling feeling about the match. Following their hasty marriage, the newlyweds sought refuge in an apartment on Tyndall Avenue in Toronto for their honeymoon, where an unexpected character named Ronald intrusively became a constant companion throughout their purported time together. Ronald Barry, a 28-year-old immigrant from Italy, was Jack's closest confidant and best friend. A professional ballroom dancer by trade, Ronald brought an air of mystery to the trio's dynamic. Whispers permeated their small community back home, hinting at an unusual bond between Jack, Christina, and Ronald, an alliance that seemed to defy the norms of social convention. Amidst the intricate dance of relationships and secrets, Christina's sister Helen voiced an unsettling suspicion that lingered in the air like an unspoken omen. Could Ronald's seemingly unbreakable bond with Jack be concealing a darker truth? As suspicion wound its way through the community, the question remained, was there more to this tragic love triangle? than met the eye. Strangely, on May 17, 1947, the trio left their honeymoon location in Toronto and embarked on a journey to Ronald's secluded cottage in Severn Falls, accessible only by boat. As the secluded retreat unfolded, reports surfaced of Christina's unsettling behavior. She was seen with the men, oscillating between bouts of inexplicable tears and moments of eerie detachment. According to later investigations, she was also engaging in mysterious conversations with Ronald about the authenticity of Jack's love for her. The beautiful cottage setting became the stage for a psychological drama that would ultimately culminate in tragedy. The ominous events reached their climax on May 20th, a day marked by the ignition of Ronald's cottage. Ronald, upon returning to the cabin from a trip to the store, discovered the cottage in flames and Jack in a disoriented state nursing a conspicuous head injury. Pulling him from the growing fire, Ronald desperately searched for Christina but found no trace of her within the rapidly deteriorating structure. The cottage succumbed to the voracious flames and was in a pile of ashes within a mere hour. In a frantic attempt to save Jack and seek medical attention, Ronald transported him on a boat to Severn Falls. It was during this tumultuous period that the grim reality unfolded. Neville Sweet proprietor of a nearby boathouse came to the area when she saw the fire and stumbled upon Christina's lifeless form. Christina was in a mere nine inches of water and just 150 feet from the charred remains of the cottage. Astonishingly, her body bore no signs of burns or violence. 
When the smoke cleared and the subsequent investigation ensued, it unveiled a perplexing autopsy report for Christina. It revealed traces of codeine in her stomach. The official cause of death was chillingly declared as drowning. The inexplicable circumstances surrounding her death, coupled with the uncanny sequence of events leading up to that tragic evening, thrust the tale of Christina Kettlewell into a puzzle, shrouded in a seemingly idyllic honeymoon gone horribly awry. But there's more. An unexpected witness, Major Lawrence Scartafield, came forward claiming he had tried valiantly to extinguish the ravenous blaze destroying the cottage that evening. However, Scartafield's eerie assertion that he saw no sign of Christina's body in the river, despite ferrying water from its banks, only deepened the questions around when and how she actually died. In the smoldering aftermath, a frenzy of interrogations and accusations ensued implicating Jack, Ronald, and an additional 20 individuals caught up in the whirlwind. Jack himself, having suffered burns, a head wound, alleged drugging and utter shock, was immediately subjected to a grueling three-hour police grilling upon being released from the hospital. Under questioning, Jack asserted his complete lack of memory from 11 a.m. that morning until he arrived at the hospital in Severn Falls and was released from police custody. While a disoriented Jack claimed memory loss in those fateful unaccounted hours, Ronald was subjected to a grinding 13-hour interrogation by police. What emerged was a staggering 3,000-word statement that officers ominously described as fantastic. The use of this term hinted at the unbelievable nature of Ronald's account. The sinister connotation left investigators grappling with the veracity of his narrative and the possibility that the truth was shrouded in a labyrinth of deception. As the police sifted through conflicting testimonies and elusive clues, the fog of uncertainty surrounding Christina's final hours only thickened. The shadow of doubt loomed over the key players of the investigation, each seemingly harboring secrets that threatened the very fabric of the investigation. The twisting saga of Christina's disturbing death only intensified as a long-awaited inquest commenced on June 19, 1947. What should have been standard legal proceedings soon morphed into a circus-like spectacle that gripped the public's imagination. The proceedings, marked by an unprecedented level of public interest, drew crowds not only within the courtroom, but spilled onto the courthouse steps and grounds outside. In an odd and unsettling twist, onlookers even sought autographs from Jack and Ronald, the central figures in this chilling drama. It's important to note that Jack and Ronald were not on trial for murder. Instead, the inquest aimed to ascertain whether foul play had played a role in Christina's tragic demise. The highly public investigation unfolded, revealing a tapestry of intriguing details that only further deepened the mystery surrounding the young woman's death. The jury, tasked with determining whether foul play played a role in Christina's death, grappled with a deluge of sensationalized information. The culmination of the investigation, however, left the jurors in a state of indecision. Their statement reflected the perplexity that shrouded the circumstances. Due to the fact that the post-mortem examination disclosed codeine in the stomach of the deceased, and due to the suspicious fact that she was found drowned, this jury is unable to decide on the evidence given whether or not foul means were employed in her death. Jack and Ronald walked free from criminal culpability, and though exonerated from direct involvement in Christina's demise, they were not spared from the exposure of their relationships with both the deceased and each other. The police report laid bare the distress that Christina experienced, attributing it to the unnatural conduct of her husband and Barry. Amidst the ever-growing speculation, a chilling possibility emerged, that Christina, haunted by mental turmoil, may have taken her own life. The inquest unveiled a series of suicide notes, each a poignant testament to her internal struggles. The first, penned on Easter, the Sunday before the engagement to Jack, hinted at poisoning and her apprehension about Jack's proposal. Another note, dated at the end of April, revealed a darker intent, to end not only her own life but also Jack's, driven by a desperate belief that she was merely a passing fancy to him. The final note, written the day before her death and addressed to a Mrs. Thomas, alluded to a tragic denouement. In a foreboding tone, Christina wrote of impending finality as she awaited Ronald's return to the cottage, hinting at a profound fear that something dire was imminent. During the courtroom hearings, the handwriting expert confirmed the authenticity of the notes, sealing Christina's tragic writing with the weight of her own words. 
Ronald's peculiar actions added an eerie layer to this revelation. He had retained the letters before the cottage burned to the ground, seemingly the only items he saved from the inferno. A startling piece of evidence emerged, painting the duo in a more sinister light. The acquisition of life insurance policies before Christina's death. Jack, in a move that raised eyebrows, secured two separate policies, one on himself and the other on Christina, before their wedding. Each policy, valued at $5,000 Canadian, boasted a double indemnity clause potentially doubling the payout if the cause of death was deemed accidental. Ronald, curiously, stood as the beneficiary on both policies. Adding another layer of suspicion, Ronald had his own insurance policy on the cottage that would later succumb to flames, with Jack listed as the beneficiary. The backdrop of failed careers in construction and insurance for Ronald added a chilling dimension to these financial maneuvers. Furthermore, the revelation that Jack had excluded his family from his will, coupled with the peculiar transfer of his war gratuity to Ronald, raised questions about his motivations. Christina's wedding ring, a symbol of commitment, became another interesting item in the inquest. Its mysterious disappearance fueled speculation, with conflicting reports on its origin and cost. Whether Ronald purchased it or Jack had even potentially borrowed it from a married friend remained unclear. But its absence after Christina's death did not go unnoticed. A theory that gained traction during a tense courtroom exchange was the very real possibility of a relationship between Jack and Ronald, something Ronald had initially confessed to, but later recanted. The Toronto Star captured the intensity of the moment, describing the fantastic triangle of twisted and thwarted emotions, taking shape as Jack reluctantly acknowledged the alleged love affair under the pressure of Crown Counsel C.P.'s relentless questioning. The true nature of the relationships within this bizarre trio remained shrouded in a fog of conflicting testimonies and hidden agendas. As the inquest continued to peel back the layers of deception, the unsettling question lingered. Had Jack and Ronald orchestrated a plan that culminated in Christina's tragic death? Or were they themselves victims? In the end, we are left to ponder the maddening questions that may never be answered. Did Jack Kettlewell and Ronald Barry get swept up in a vortex of taboo compulsions that led them to premeditate the unthinkable against Christina? Or were they simply accomplices after the fact, trying to conceal and cover up self-destructive indiscretions that then spiraled out of control into accidental death? The murky waters of Severn Falls still swirl with the ghosts of that fateful spring in 1947. No matter how much time passes, the name Christina Kettlewell will forever be inextricably tied to a haunting, quintessential true crime mystery, an intricately woven saga of love, passion, depravity, and death that has embedded itself into the dark lore of the 20th century's most unresolved cases. As we part ways with this haunting tale, the mysterious events of Severn Falls endures, an unsolved puzzle that continues to captivate our imaginations urging us to contemplate the dark corners of human existence. In the silence that follows, the echoes of Christina's story serve as a stark reminder that sometimes the most profound mysteries lie within the recesses of the human heart. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fireside Unsolved. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Until next time, take it easy and be easy, you filthy bastards.